Helmet to Helmet Radio, 96.9 KACB. I am Brandon Brown. And I'm Chris Meyer. Yeah, you are. We got a, oh, man. What a show we got. I'm so excited. They're, they had to turn our mics down unbelievable levels because we're just so excited. We are so pumped. Just blew your ears out with that Sorry last that. excitement. That was, That's okay, that man. I mean, don't apologize to me. Apologize to the, to the listeners. But you know what? Don't apologize to the listeners because they're happy enough because... The eggs beat Alabama. Now, how's here's how we usually do this show. Uh, we usually spend a lot of time on all sports topics. It's helmet to helmet, and we go from helmet to helmet to helmet to helmet. But at the same time, me and Chris Meyer will clash with our helmets, and we'll go helmet to helmet, uh, helmet to helmet context. So, this show is going to be a little different in the very fact that we are going to spend. 15, maybe 10 minutes on some random stuff that I might want to bring up, and then the rest of the show is going to be all Aggies. Yes. All Aggies. And I agree with that. I totally approve. You approve of this. I'm Chris Meyer, and I approve of this message deal? Yes. Okay. Now, this is totally cool. So, uh, tons and tons of things to talk about. One of the first things I want to get to that's, I don't really think, sport-related, is that, so, one of the shows that we did finally got put onto the internet, and I, I, it did on my personal behalf, because I have relatives up in Sandy, up by Sandy, Hurricane Sandy, right, in New York, and so... Before the power went out, or uh, one of my aunt's house uh, didn't have their power go out, and so other aunts and uncles and cousins migrated to her house, and so I sent her the show, right? I say, check out our show, Helmet to Helmet. Tell me what you think. And so they sat around because there's tons of, you know, there's not much to do either when the lights are off, you know, they downloaded the show, or they're the only house with lights, so they're all coming together as a family to listen to the show. So they loved the show, by the way. They loved Helmet to Helmet. It went global officially, even though global's New York. That's cool. <laughs> it basically is, though, right? <laughs> it's a different place over there. Different, different place over there. They loved the show. And, uh, you know, along with my mom, she loved the show. But my mom told me that I'm going to need, you know, any great show and any two great show hosts need a catchphrase. So, <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of putting you on the spot to kind of or be making you have a catchphrase because I might have one up my sleeve. What do you got over I don't, there? I don't know. I don't know if I have one. <laughs> I, I have I have a friend who uh, I get into all kinds of philosophical and theological discussions with this guy, okay. and he always says, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. So, <laughs> shout out to Matthew Wurst, who is not listening, but I think I might pick it up. I'm, I'm really liking it. <laughs> That's an awesome one. I'm really, not buying man. it. Uh, you're not buying it, so you're gonna steal yours. I might steal mine, man, because uh, I used to have an all, I used to have a favorite show, and it was called Extras. You ever heard of Extras? No. So it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Um, it was the show uh, by Ricky Gervais, who was the original creator of The Office, but the British one, right? And he was uh, he the, his character got hired on to do this British TV sitcom, and <laughs> this is so corny, but it just stays in my head. And uh, it has, it's not as cool as I'm, I'm buying. I'm not buying it. But it was, you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? <laughs> so that's what it was. Are you having a laugh? Is he a- having a laugh? Extras sounds like the worst acted show of all time. It's like <laughs> just made up of extras from different movies. It's like, well, wow, I, I don't even know what's going on. What this acting this, is this horrible. Guy, this guy was trying to get a spot as an extra. Okay. He was just an extra trying to finally get his face in there. And he finally got the sitcom. And that's what it was. You having a laugh? Is he having a laugh? So... That's uh, I might just bust out the laugh every now and then. The so, laugh. The laugh. So uh, every now and then you I'm might. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying <laughs> yes, the laugh. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this weekend, what were so what are your initial reactions from this game? Well, like I said, we got plenty of time for the game, <laughs> dude. I, mean, I you want to you just want to jump straight into it, dude. I we have to. We got it. The viewers are like, come on. I don't care about the laugh. I don't care that Chris isn't buying the law. <laughs> I care about Aggie football. That's like what they're saying. Right are you having a laugh? There's like lie? there's people on the street who are like yelling at us. Well, yeah, people should know Aggie right football. outside. People are actually holding up. So each each day that we have this show, each week our show gets bigger and bigger. By the way, and we just now people are lined up outside, and so we're outside St. Mary's and we're directly across from construction, and people have purposely bought out a spot on top of the construction spot and are holding up signs saying Chris and Brandon. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's crazy out there. And we, you know, it looks wild. So we'll give a sh- shout outs to the fans on top of the construction site. So, uh, you know, it's it's gotten wild. So, and if those fans and if any other fans want to email us during the show or perhaps tweet at us during the show, our, our um, email address is helmet2, the number two, helmet, radio at gmail.com. I've gotten so good at that, you know, because in the previous weeks I might have failed in that. <laughs> telling you guys what the email address and is. And then our Twitter is at 2 helmet radio. That would be the number two helmet radio. We actually just got a tweet from Casey Railing. What did he say? He said, "Nice joke there at CB Meyer." At <laughs> but C. he also he said at to helmet radio. And okay. Then he said okay, hashtag cool. extras. Extras. Yeah, he knows. He <laughs> so knows. he's buying extras. Okay, he's buying it. <laughs> I'm not still. <laughs> okay. By the way, so a recent report came out um, that uh, with all these new ratings going on. Uh, my man, and so if anybody doesn't know, I'm a huge FSU fan, and Chris is a huge LSU fan, but this week, of course, his Aggie fandom is going to take over, right? He's still going to step up. I'm still an FSU fan, and uh, something we will get into, just so we have sort of an outline, is the rankings. We'll talk about rankings. Jimbo Fisher's upset about the rankings. That's a little bit of a preview of what we'll, what we'll do. Um the SEC is one of the best conferences in the country. Are they getting their fair share of respect? That's something we'll also talk about. Uh, which bowl should the Aggies be going into and why? Something we're also going to be talking about. So we're going to give you this nice little outline of the show because we have a multitude of different aspects to talk about. We can also talk about the Aggies brand and what they've done with it. Sumlin, that's always fun, man. You got anything else we're going to talk about? Uh, we've got, we've got a little bit of recruiting and a little bit of, uh, some other recruiting that someone's going to do. Uh, there's, there's three players that we have in mind that, uh, Kevin, someone's going to have to beg to stay if, uh, we want the Aggie success to continue next year. Recruiting's cool. And maybe during the off season, we might have a show just directly related to recruiting. I mean, uh, yeah, to recruiting high school players for sure. That could be pretty cool. Um, okay, man. Well, I got to tell you. It was a crazy win, and to start things off, I didn't think that that many people actually thought that A&M was going to win the game. As you kind of alluded to, we talked about this a little bit. I don't think too many people actually—they were saying it, right? But, yeah, and, and I, I, was, I was telling you this today, that we had so many people before the LSU game go, oh, man, we're going to beat LSU, we're going to beat LSU— and after we lost to him, it was just kind of like, oh, well, did I say that? And I'm the king of that. I'm the king of calling things and yeah. not mentioning it after. But anyway, so Alabama, I just felt like there were a lot less people who were like, man, we got a real shot against Alabama. People were getting really excited about the game. And as I was telling people, I was really excited about the first quarter. I joked about that all week, and it was hilarious because we were up 20-0 to zero at the end of the first quarter. No, we specifically talked about that. We actually predicted that, yeah. which awesome us. You know that? If we could just play ourselves over, it would be <laughs> awesome because we specifically said guarantee that – and I don't know if we said guarantee, but uh, we definitely said a and going to get out up top early. And that was the difference is I, I did think that a and was going to get out top, and then I, and then I said, uh, but I think that Alabama is going to end up scoring – is going to kind of come back and end up winning by like 14. Well, my going out early was like I thought the Aggies were going to go up 7-0. Oh, yeah, 7-14. No, and cause the and same- so, so 20-0, I mean, all this – it was like, whoa, like we didn't just punch Alabama. Like we knocked them down. I mean, they, they were up on a nine count. I mean, we just hit them before they even knew it was coming. And they kind of got themselves together and somewhat started to figure us out. But – we made the plays we needed to. Let me to tell you something, man. You're exactly right, and that coming out top, coming out on top early is so important because we talked about that it was going to happen, and we talked about because we saw it a little bit with Florida and LSU, which just goes back to I specifically remember, and and I obviously haven't watched the tape or anything like that, but against LSU, the Aggies were up for a bit, right? And then I, and there was a misplay, and I said, man, that is so important because now is the time that they're down, and we needed that point so bad, or we needed to get ahead so bad so we could, you know, then put LSU that much further down because eventually they'll come back. But Alabama, it just it went, uh, you know, it just went our way, all, all, you know, all the way through, and they struggled to come back. They did, and then, I mean, Johnny Football, who we're going to get into – made some huge, huge throws. The throw that he made to Ryan Swope, 
I mean, just total game changer. And then the touchdown pass he had to Malcolm Kennedy, he didn't make those passes against LSU. I mean, that was just like he, he punched you in the mouth in the first quarter, but here he is in the second quarter, and he's not running on you. He's not doing what everybody was afraid of. He made two unbelievable throws Man, that won us the game. Great throws, uh, and it's also so rewarding to see his growth throughout this whole entire first year, which is fantastic. He's, uh, I mean, like, because they knew, they did a good job, a and in, in terms of the fact that they knew that Alabama was going to do a good job in terms of the fact that they were just going to rush, not necessarily go after the quarterback with all they can, but kind of keep the pocket, make Johnny pass in the pocket. And they knew that was going to happen, and so Johnny was forced to pass in the pocket, and in doing so, he stepped up, man. He had some, he had some great throws during the game. He did, and I mean... He had he had two passing touchdowns, more than 250 yards, and then he also got his 92 rushing yards, which those weren't the insane yards that he's putting up against other teams. But to do that against Alabama, and that's what's just so incredible about this year. It's, it's a ra- record-breaking year, and he's played like the number one, the number two, and the number five defense in the country, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Which, Colin Klein, the best defense he's played, is the number 18 defense in the country. Shout out to David Brinkman. He gave me that stat. Oh, fantastic ago. stat. Fantastic stat. But that's something you got to think about when we're talking about Heisman. And there's so, and this is what's crazy about this show is because we can talk about Johnny Heisman. We can talk about Johnny. Fo- we can talk about the name, copyright issues, and we can talk about there's a lot of different topics that we could go into today. So I guess I'm giving you, Chris Meyer, the floor in terms of what topic you want to dive on right now because there's so many and I'd like to specifically hone in and kind of concentrate on a certain topic. Okay, so obviously at the beginning of the year, we made this huge move to come to the SEC and you had SEC fans who were just, oh, they're going to get killed. You had Texas fans, oh, they're going to get killed. I mean, nobody had faith in the Aggies. I don't even know if we had faith in the Aggies in year one. And then they come out, play really, really well, And I was telling you this today that we could have had a good year, but there were kind of some excuses for a good year. I'm not saying they were legit, but there were people were going to have some explanations for a good year. Those Arkansas's down, Auburn's down. Look at the big teams y'all played. Y'all didn't even beat them. And it's like beating Alabama completely changes that. Completely changes everything, and it completely changes what I don't think there's. And and here's the deal: it's kind of like the Lou Holtz thing. Where, like, if you predicted this, if it were to happen, it's just by happenstance. You didn't predict it because you were right. Like, right, Lou Lou Holtz is all about Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame. And it happens that Notre Dame is good. It's not because Lou Lou Holtz predicted them to be good because he's predicted them for the past 20 years, right? But it just so happens to be that they're good this year, right? And so the same thing with a lot of people who did pick a&M to do this, which I don't know of anybody who did. But if you did and you tell me, oh, well, A&M's only going to have two losses on the season and they're going to beat Alabama, then that's just your homerism <laughs> speaking. You weren't, you didn't predict this out of actual numbers and out of actual knowing the game, right? Yeah, and, and I mean, it's just – but that said, I mean, as Aggies, and, I mean, I've got friends, uh, David Brinkman, Drew Nelson, who have grown up with Aggie parents and just followed Aggie football forever and – you want to be optimistic, and every year you're like, this is our year, this is our year. And there's this this new attitude about Kevin Sumlin, and he's here to stay. I mean, Kevin Sumlin is going to be the coach at a and for a long time. He's going to retire here. You know I'm what? I was ecstatic. actually – And he's changed the culture. So, you know, I was actually just going to ask you that. So how much did this win – Specifically, not only this year because you could have lost to Alabama and still had two losses, but and that's a totally different three season. losses. Yeah, uh, if we had lost. No, no, but I'm saying you could if we would have lost to Alabama and still had two losses. Okay, right? so you're saying we beat Florida, maybe. right? Beat, okay. beat Florida, right? And then lose to LSU and right, Alabama, okay. right? And then I think this whole win changes a lot of things, and the win on Alabama changes tons of different things. And not only that, but how how much does it change the fact that if even if someone has a bad year next year? How much is it going to just – It. how much does, does he have next year in the bag, right? Uh, I mean, he, he's he got next year in the bag, and any coach is going to have a few years to implement their system, get their recruits and whatnot. And so, ne- I mean, we'll talk about next year a little bit later in the show because I think we can start looking that way. But he's – I mean, he is – and I have confidence in him. I mean, you know what? I don't think the Aggies are going to do badly next year because I'm so confident in Kevin Sumlin. And 
that win against Alabama, Sean Porter tweeted after. And, you know, I said, as fans, you know, we might have not been super confident. I knew a few people were. I Shout out to Chris Russo. I think he's listening. I think he was one of the people who was pretty pumped about this game and was talking a big game before the weekend. But uh, I just – I have no idea where I was here. Okay, so Sean <laughs> Porter, Sean Porter after the game tweeted, no, like – uh, we we aren't surprised or something to that effect. Like no, everyone's surprised but us. Everyone's huh. surprised but us. Interesting. And that attitude is gonna win football games in the SEC. And that- some and someone else was telling me that Johnny before the game had uh, was talk some 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 guy on TV was saying that Johnny football is young enough, immature enough, inexperienced enough. To not be afraid of the Alabama yeah, defense. Yeah, it's either you're completely confident or you're completely ignorant of the situation. Yeah. In which and, I don't care. I'll right, take either exactly, way. Exactly. Either way. And and let me tell you something. That's been Johnny's demeanor the whole entire season. If I mean, because here's what happens: the fact that he's so young, and we talked about this in the, on another show, the fact that he's so young enables him to be so raw, right? If you're sitting there and you're a redshirt junior. Before the time you come in, then you're spending three years on the sidelines, just kind of almost getting scared. Uh, not scared, but like you're learning the game and you're going to be scared. Then you're going to overcome that fear. And then you have to learn the intricacies and all that. And it becomes so much more complicated than what it is. Yeah. The fact that Johnny is so raw and, and so true just enables him to just play the game without overthinking things. And that's what makes him the player he is. Yeah. And, and you've, t- I mean, a coach is going to recruit a player and try to get him to where he wants to be. And with Johnny starting as a redshirt freshman with someone, with the new offense, with the whole new staff, it's almost like Johnny's saying, hey, coaches, like this is what I bring to the table. This is where I'm at. And the coaches are like, well, this is our offense, and this is where we're at. And there's just this perfect, perfect mold. Perfect storm, right. It's just, it's just unbelievable. I mean, this, it's crazy. We have so much talent. And, I mean, I'm, you read the reactions and you hear reactions from other SEC fans, and they're legitimately afraid that they have to play Johnny football for the next hopefully three years. I mean, I don't I don't know how good his NFL shots are looking because he's listed as six one. I think he's five eleven. Oh yeah, but, I mean, so I mean they're think, terrified. So again, and once again, going back to that whole ignorant thing, and not saying that Johnny football is yeah, ignorant, no. right? But you get that you get we're going around along with this whole analogy, and it's a, it might be a bad metaphor, right? But it's like you could you could fight like a thirty five year old guy. Or you could fight like a crazy little 14 or 15 year old, and the 35 year old guy would like beat you up, but he'd be like, All right, you're done there, chap. Now go to the hospital. You'd be like, All right, but this 15 year old would like take out a knife and like go at you, and you'd be like, He's too crazy. He doesn't know what he's doing, right? Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, <laughs> right. this isn't even normal. Right. I didn't train for this. Right. It's, I mean, it's like a boxer. Like, a boxer can fight a boxer, but they can't fight like the crazy Taekwondo guy. Right. Right. You know, I mean, no one's used to this. And Nick Saban said that before the game. He said, we don't have anybody on our scout team who can replicate Johnny Manziel. Right. It doesn't exist. And it's just this whole, like, it's scary. Like, they don't know. And they're not only afraid of him because of what he can do, but just because, his, I mean, he's just his whole raw demeanor coming into the game and going against these defenses. It's- yeah. And, and there was an article written earlier in the year where they just talked about how Johnny Manziel was just this scout team hero. I mean, he was just an absolute legend with the scout team because – the coaches. So the point of a scout team for people who don't know is they learn the plays. So the coaches watch the film, figure out the plays of the other team, and the scout team's job is to learn a good chunk of the successful plays of the offense that that team will be playing that weekend, or in the defensive scout team will learn the defense. But let's stick with the offense for now. So the offense will learn a lot of those plays and try to execute them against the defense. So that's what the scout team's doing. So Johnny Manziel was the quarterback of the scout team. So every week they'd be like, hey, like this is the quarterback we're playing. Like You need to replicate that. So whether it was David Ash of Texas or Landry Jones of Oklahoma, his job was to try to play like that quarterback and run that offense. Right. Well, apparently the coaches were just mad at him all the time because it was like, you don't understand, Johnny. Co- like uh, these quarterbacks, these don't, quarterbacks run. don't run like you. Like everything you're doing right now is insane. And yes, it's awesome that you're completely destroying our defense right now, but this is not helping us prepare for the game. Right, right, you know. Right. Yeah. And so he was just this unbelievable legend who no one could touch. And so in practice, you got he's wearing the red, the the jerseys. I think we wear white ones since we usually wear maroon, but you got or green ones maybe the quarterback practice quarterback jerseys. Wears, okay. 
that say you're not allowed to touch them. Well, the funny thing is the players knew that they weren't allowed to touch them in practice, but I think what they didn't know is they wouldn't have been able to touch them right, if it was right, a real right, game. Right. Yeah, I think you told me that story where um, – so even right, he was doing all these like crazy spins and he's all he's doing these moves, but people couldn't tackle them, so they think like, oh, it's just because we're only able to two hand touch him, and so that's why he's escaping. Then all of a sudden he comes into the real games and he's doing every single thing he did with this green jersey on, where you're not allowed to tackle him. Um, I wanted to jump back into this whole Kevin Sumlin thing where you said he's here forever. Um, let me tell you, so A and M fans were, were very short fused, and like I said, this win over Alabama defines this year and it's going to buy him at least two more years easily and not that he wasn't going to leave after two more years but if he would have had this first year that was down and then all of a sudden he would have had a second year that was down then guess what the fans would have been doing oh another coach who's just going to come in and give us six to seven wins or anything like that and so even if someone gives us six or seven wins next year which he won't right god bless (laughs) but just even if he does He's got a total pass. He's he's a total pass. And it's great to see the fan base like this because instead of saying, oh, man, he's going to only give us six or seven wins, the fan base has now turned its tune to the fact that, well, this was a down year. And they'll start making excuses for him, which is awesome. Like, oh, well, he didn't have this. We lost our offensive line. And they'll start making excuses for the coach, which is awesome. Instead of being like, oh, man, he's only bringing us the six or seven uh, wins. Instead, it's now – we're going to make as many possible excuses for you so you can get to the next year, which is awesome. And, and next year is going to be interesting, and you mentioned that. Like, the excuse next year could be, oh, look, we lost our, uh, our offensive line. And that's something I want to talk about is, so this year there's, there's one player who coached someone. Is like, it's like the number one recruit that we're working on right now, Ricky Seals-Jones. And apparently after the game he tweeted that he was coming in the college station to celebrate with the players and all. So it's looking like we're probably going to get him. But – my argument is someone is doing an unbelievable job recruiting these high school players to come play college football at, at A&M, but he needs to use all of that talent right now to come and recruit Jake Matthews, Luke Jokel, and the two, the two tackles, and Demontre Moore, our unbelievable defensive end, to come back to Texas A&M for next year. Because you were saying next year he could get let off the hook, but – People are getting excited. I mean, we, I mean, he's shown – I disagree with you a little bit here, going helmet to helmet here. I disagree nice. with you a little bit in the fact that he's given himself some unbelievable expectations because he's, hmm. he's, he's winning quickly. And so next year, if, if he could get those three back, I'm, I really do think – I'm not being biased. I really do think that A&M will start number three in the country, okay. which is just unreal. Well, I think regardless if they get them back, I think I mean I I wasn't even thinking about rankings next year. I think regardless if they get them back, I think they'd start top ten in the nation. It, it should be top ten, and it could be a little bit tough with those linemen. So, so those of y'all who haven't heard, so it's a very interesting situation where we could be able to get all three of these back. So, Demontre Moore, the defensive end, he tweeted a few weeks ago that he wants to come back and get his degree. And some inside information, I went to Northgate on Saturday <laughs> night just to see all the players and see how For crazy it was. For studying purposes only. For studying purposes of show. Only. Studying purposes of show. And I ran into Demontre Moore, and I said, I, I looked at it, I looked him in the eye, shook his hand, said, if you want to be my hero, come back to Texas a <laughs> next year. And he went, all right, man, with a big grin on his face. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe he was just trying to make me happy. Maybe he was intimidated by my presence. Maybe he thought I was going to fight him or something. You know, I, you are scared. And so, again, so we have a bunch of listeners. And, we, again, we don't have cameras, which we'll soon get uh, once our show makes uh, St. Mary's enough millions, which is going to happen. <laughs> uh, but people don't know that you are just – humongously jacked right like yeah, i'm like six six two fifty all muscle <laughs> right and it's crazy you know sometimes you just want to put a voice next to a picture <laughs> you know and so if people don't know you are just man you're a buff guy so buff he, guy. he was intimidated uh by the way so if you want to know and people love the behind the scenes stuff so when i told you that my uh my family listened to uh our show you know what they liked by what, the way what which you like? said which you said like they're not gonna like that me eating. I ate for the I ate for the radio. And they were like, they loved when you ate. Like, right? So they love behind the scenes stuff, right? And so uh my girlfriend just came in. So my girlfriend is here. Uh shout out to my girlfriend, Amy Pasalugo. So she's here watching the show. Now this is a potential issue, but I'm gonna turn it around and she's eventually gonna hear what I have to say. So 
A, me and you are extraordinarily popular on this show because of the show, right? <laughs> and we have just so many listeners, listeners, and we have such a humongous fan base, right? And so me telling the world that my girlfriend's listening, our female listenership might drop off a little bit, okay? And with that being said, with that being said, me and you make just so much money off this show that because we're going to drop off in female listenership, we're going to make a little less money. And so in order to bring up that money, I think my girlfriend is going to have to buy me a couple of dinners. Does that does that make sense? Does that make so sense? So are you saying like all the ladies that are like, oh, Brandon Brown's single, they're like, oh my gosh, we just found out he has a girlfriend. Right, right. And, and now they're we're gonna not going to listen to the show anymore. And Right. And because of that, we're going to make less money because we make so much money doing the show. And uh, and now Amy owes me several dinners. Is that, is that cool with you? <laughs> she's shaking her head, yes. She's shaking her head she's and rolling so, her eyes. And rolling happy, her eyes. She's I'm so gonna happy add that. about this. She's so happy about it. So, okay, so getting and back. And by the way, she <laughs> gave me a drink, and I will, again, just like I ate into the microphone that one time. This I'm is gonna, horrible, guys. I, am, I apologize to our viewers. <sighs> <laughs> you can't hear the drinking sound, so we had to exaggerate that. He'd, if you did that every time you took a sip out of something, <laughs> you'd be yeah, yeah. the most annoying roommate ever, and there'd probably be a Seinfeld episode about you. Well, there is a Kirby there... enthusiasm on. <sighs> okay, which is similar. So, so <laughs> getting back to these players. Okay, so what are our odds? So I told you to watch any more. It sounds, it sounds possible, you know? I mean, it's crazy because he's a first-round pick. Like, some people are saying top five. Some people are saying top five pick. And he might come back. Who knows? He wants to get his degree. Good for him. Right. Like, maybe he wants to win a national championship. Convince him someone. Let's see what you can do. Okay. Two tackles, which this is the big one. Because I really do think that both these guys are going to be starting left tackles in the NFL. And we have them both on the same line. And one of them has to play right tackle yeah. because we have them both. So, if y'all don't know, left tackle is like what Michael Orr played in the blind side. And it's like a big <laughs> deal. Okay. It's called you the blind laugh. side. Because when the quarterback drops back, if he's right-handed, that's the side that he can't see because it's his back side. And so the guy who's on the le- the far left end is the guy who's who's up against guys like DeMontre Moore, defensive ends who are trying to get to the quarterback, big, freak, scary guys. So you need just an unbelievable left tackle. And that's why they make so much money in the NFL, and that is why I will on air beg Luke Jokel to come back to Texas A&M because we need him so much. So Luke Jokel is he's probably the least likely to set. And this is going to be the toughest sell for Kevin Sumlin. Luke Jokel actually does have a twin brother here. He's a, one of the backup quarterbacks. But, man, he's looking like top 10 pick. I mean, everybody is just saying. So he's going to be making some big-time NFL money with yeah, the big man, team. Yeah, man. So it's one thing if you're going to sell a high school kid to a college program, right? You're saying you're getting this, you're getting this, you're getting the scholarship. But it's another thing to sell a college program with the option of NFL and saying, hey, well, you'll get this, and the scout, all, all the scout has to do is say $20 million. And that's it. And then he's going to say, and the scout's thing is, hey, you're not going to have this chance next year. Who knows where you'll be next year? This is a guaranteed $20 million this year. It is. And that Alabama win the other night felt like $20 million to me. Ah. That was, I mean, you can't replicate that. You cannot we are at the best college in the world. We're at the best college in the world. Like, what, did I, what did I say the other day? I wrote this down because I was like, I was like, I want to say that on on air. Like that's just you wrote this down. Uh, well, let me tell you something. So you also are a humongous LSU fan. I am, and it seems to me that this whole entire year, y- you you were with the Aggies, but the Aggies barely edged out LSU, and because you grew up LSU, am uh, I yeah, right? Y- yes, sir. So where do you sit? Where do you stand now? I'm an Aggie. I mean, like, how much more of an Aggie are you than LSU? A lot, a lot. lot. Like, I'm a lot. I mean, and then there's like, there's a huge drop off from A and M to LSU. I mean, like, Mm. if I have like fandom points to give out, it's like, not. (laughs) It's like 89 percent to A and M, 10 percent to LSU, and then one percent to like any team I'm Florida watching State. on Florida maybe State. Florida State's in there. Nice. They're like a small fraction Thanks, of that 1%. And no, so, give me 1% and I'm then not, let, let... You know what? No, give, I got Houston Rockets to pull for... Oh, well, well, you know, not, give me a we're percent and I'll, I'll throw an LSU percent. Remember, we're mutual uh, with this. Dude, you will maybe like... I mean, I'm going to be honest right now. It's like 0.1%. <laughs> so hook me up. I'll give you, in return, I'll give you a 0.1% for per- LSU. Okay, fine. You can have a percent. All Jeez. right, then I'll give you an LSU percent. All right, All right cool. I lied, and I just got an LSU percent. That was fun. Okay, so this I'm is what I said. I'm going to take mine back then. I wrote this down. I wrote this down. I said, last night, which, referring to Saturday night, last night, 
was <laughs> one of the coolest nights we'll have as Aggies. I am so thankful to those players, and I was so happy to welcome them in like that, referring to the welcome party. Those guys will remember that forever, and we will remember that forever. We really do go to the best school in the country. And I'd, it was unreal after that game. So if y'all didn't have a chance to go, build a time machine and go back in time to Saturday night. Oh, I love sports. CC, our producer, was there. I was there. Fortunately, Brandon wasn't because he had, was coming in from out of town. Sad, sad day. He's coming in from your town, too. <laughs> New Orleans. From New Orleans, my town. <laughs> <laughs> I love that place. Okay, so this there were thousands. and th- I mean, just thousands of Aggies there. They had a double-decker bus with the speaker on it that you all have seen. You'll see it around ring day and stuff. Blaring Go Johnny Go, the Aggie War Hands, and the Spirit of Aggie Land over and over and over again. Can we talk on, and I might be interrupting you, I'm sorry, we can get back to that, but I want to talk about uh, Johnny Football and his marketability and perhaps them exploiting Johnny Football a little bit. Okay, so this is what, I mean, they are. I mean, there's no, and this is this is a problem with college football. So at this thing the other night, I mean, there were a few signs there, and our buddy Stephen Frazee brought a sign that was a picture of Johnny Doing the Heisman pose of uh, against the Alabama against Alabama. It was he so went sick. to the, he ran to the SEC and paid like twenty five bucks and printed this thing off because no other place in College Station who makes copies was open, but it was awesome because he got Johnny to sign it and it looks, and so, it looks so so cool, cool man. It looks awesome. You know what? If Steven, if you're listening, uh, tweet that to us it, and we'll put it on our our Twitter because that's a cool picture. Man. It is a cool picture, and uh, I can actually retweet that later because I think he tweeted the picture from the Reed Rowdy's account. So if y'all want to see the picture, it's pretty cool because he's the president of the Reed Rowdy's. Right. So anyway, so Johnny A and M is currently working with his family to trademark Johnny Football. Well, someone else already trademarked the Johnny yeah, Football. Yeah, but they're, they're, they'll get it. Right, and, and, and A&M's working with the yeah. family to get this. To get this back. And it's not for A&M because they can't, but they, I mean, they don't want other people making money off of Johnny's name, which is which is awesome that they're working so hard. Jason Cook, who's the VP of, uh, like, marketing at A&M, is, um, is working on that. And so, But awesome let me thing. tell you something. So, suppose, so the rule goes that these are amateur athletes, and because they're amateur athletes, they can't profit off of anything. They can't mm-hmm. get any money. And so this is why they can't be, this is why their names aren't on Madden football games, right? You can mm-hmm. only see their numbers. This is on, why they don't oh, yeah. sell specific NCAA jerseys. Football, yeah. You'll never see a college football jerseys that says uh, Klein or or uh, Manuel or any quarterback or any player yeah, ever. Just see the numbers. Just see the and numbers. It's, and it's obvious because A&M just ordered a huge batch of number two jerseys. Yeah. And that's Johnny's number. It's number two jersey, and there's specific shirts that say Johnny Football, and this frustrates me beyond. Because Do they have shirts that say Johnny? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They showed them on a Sports Center, which is another thing we'll talk about. But this frustrates me beyond, man. And it's not an A and M thing. It's a system. It's a larger issue with the NCAA, man, because it's just like you are spe- you are exploiting jo- Johnny Football. Could be making so much money if all- he. It's him. Without him, there are no jersey sales. Without him, there are no shirt sales. And he's selling that number two jersey. And and not just Johnny in general, but all college football athletes are and, not getting any money for and this. And that's what's so crazy about college football because Joe Smo, who is a scholarship athlete at AM, but just barely, and he's going to be here for four years, is getting free books, education, room and board for four years. I right. mean, it's like, it's like worth like 80000 minimum. I mean, right. I mean it's yeah. worth a ton. And then you have Johnny, who is making way, way more than $80,000 for this university. I mean, he made, he made $80,000 this weekend easily, way more than that. This, easily. And so think about also how many people he influenced because of the football win. And football wins are correlated with uh, how many people are now going to apply to A&M and A&M's uh, attendance in general as a school, not in terms of football, but in terms of uh, – the actual university and applicants to the ap- uh, to the university are correlated with football wins. So it, applicants are now going to go up to the university in general. How much money is that bringing in, right? And the Wall Street Journal has posted stats about this, about how it directly correlates yeah, absolutely. the success of your athletics, specifically football, with how many people are applying to your school. I mean, admissions numbers will go through the roof. And it's just, it's nuts. It's, it's crazy. So, and I mean... So many people can't stand this, especially the 
academics who just hate sports. Oh, <laughs> They're yeah. just like, what oh, yeah. is me wrong you with are the different. world? Me and you are different. Wrong? We are. I love it. And so, uh, all right. So for y'all OCD people, I'm going to go back a little bit because I know people are upset because we never mentioned who the third person was. So we have Demontre Moore. Okay, my bad. We have Luke Jokel. And then we have Jake Matthews. So my prediction is that it's going to be really hard to get Jokel. And if someone gets Jokel to come back, he's like the greatest coach of all time. He's, oh, man, I am going to be. Someone gets Jokel to come back, and that should go for our ESPN U college football re- recruiting yeah, class. Like, yeah, like it really should. I mean, it's unreal. We're going to have one year with the best left tackle in the country. And so the third one is Jake Matthews, where if Jokel leaves, Jake Matthews is going to move to left tackle. Now, this is very, very interesting because Jake Matthews' younger brother, Mikey Matthews, is lined up to be AM's starting center next year. Huh. And so there's reason number one for Jake to come back. Reason number two, the Matthews are a very wealthy family. I live down the street from them in Sugarland, and and slightly outside that, Missouri City, outside Houston. And Bruce Matthews... Their their father was an NFL Hall of Famer. And, I mean, b- played in the NFL for a long time, coaches in the NFL now. I mean, they are not a family who, oh, my gosh, you need to go to the NFL so you can support us. Right, Trust right, me, right, they, have a, right, right. they have a huge house. They're not going to be buying their mom a house. And so I really do think that there's some good reasons for him to stay. It's like you get to play with your brother, one. Two, you don't need the money. Three, well, you can win a national championship. That's true. That's and true. So, so you don't need the money. You only go so far, which stinks, it's a, right? Yeah, which it stinks. does. But I, like I said, man, Saturday night was worth a lot of money. That was worth a year in the NFL. It was intangible. It was priceless, like the MasterCard commercial. It's priceless. It, was, it, was, it, it really was. And I just, I really, I mean, I think after that, I don't know how any of those players last night, anybody could be thinking, I want to leave this school. I guarantee that didn't cross anybody's mind. Like, oh, man, I want to skip my senior year and go to the NFL. I don't. I guarantee that DeMontre Moore, Luke Jokel, and Jake Matthews all had thoughts, how am I going to let this go? Yeah, it's true. And those, um, we need to keep those thoughts but in yeah, the head. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's hopefully we keep those thoughts in the head. And just to play uh, devil's advocate is that it's happened many, many, many times, right? Uh, but I guess Barkley's a fantastic example, right? Barkley could have gone to the league. Instead, he chose to stay back. But then again, on the opposite side, look what happened when Barkley stayed back. That's Matt Barkley for USC, yeah, and they're having a rough, 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 rough year. Right, he stayed back because he thought this was the year that USC was going to win the championship and this was going to be it, and he was the front runner for the Heisman, and he's not even in contentions. Then the school's definitely not in contentions for any type of national talk. Yeah, but talk. we can talk about that maybe at the very end of the show is USC still has a chance to really, really mess up college football. Which I'm hoping happens. And talking about that a little bit, okay, so we rewind. Like, Let's pause for station identification. Okay. 96.9 KACV uh, Catholicism. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. You're listening to Helmet to Helmet. You're listening to Helmet to Helmet. I'm Brandon Brown. And I'm Chris Meyer. And I am drinking. <laughs> <sighs> so, so, you know what? We should have like a. A listener poll in terms of, like, do you like Brandon Slurps? You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, our listeners would just love this whole thing. Yeah, we And it should. would be like a thing. Should have a poll. <laughs> yeah. Are you having a laugh? Is he having a laugh? <laughs> I'm not buying it. I'm not buying the sipping. I'm not buying it. Oh, man. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so those of you who are just tuning in, me and Chris uh, have catchphrases as well, which we just used. But uh, this is a new thing. We're going to start using them every week. I hope so. And, um, okay. Y'all, they can't hear me shaking my head, but I'm shaking it. <laughs> <laughs> Your catchphrase is cool, though, man. Um, okay, so go, moving back a little bit. What, what did we talk about at the very beginning of the year? Like, what was, like, the best case scenario okay, right. for a and football? All right. So when we talked about what the Aggies can do, the best of the year, we were dying to and hoping upon hope to get into the Cotton Bowl and somehow just prove to somebody, really, what we could do in this big-time bowl. Yeah, and we were hoping that the stars were going to line and we were going to end up playing Texas. Mm -hmm. And now it's totally looking like this is going to happen. I mean, and the crazy thing about this is it's like worst-case scenario for Aggie football. It went from being the best-case scenario. It was was like the best bowl we could get into. It was a dream. It was a dream. And now it's just like... Yeah, let's draw it up. You know, it's it's, like, it's crazy. I mean, it just shows how successful the season goes. 
has been. I mean, at the at like week two of this show, I was like, I know this is crazy, guys, but how cool would it be if we had a great year and <laughs> drank some more Aggie Kool Aid and we got to play Texas? This is your impression Bowl. of you, yeah. By is. the way, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now this is so nuts. This is so nuts. But so there's this big like bowl projection. Uh, show that's on Fox, and then ESPN has like a follow up of, of the BCS every every Sunday when the BCS rankings come out. And ESPN's expert predicted last night that the Aggies are going to play Oklahoma, not in the Cotton Bowl, in the Fiesta Bowl. Fiesta Bowl, which is crazy because there's other there's two other and okay, so this is a couple of things to be said. So there's two other sites, SB Nation and CBS. Both strong sites, uh, especially for predictions, that have us in the Cotton Bowl with Texas. Now, you want the Fiesta Bowl because of why. Tell me why you want the Fiesta Bowl. I want the Fiesta Bowl because the Aggies have been to one BCS Bowl in their history. I mean, the first year of the BCS was, I think it was in 98, we lost to Ohio State. And... It's been a long time. And so a BCS Bowl is a BCS Bowl, and I know playing Texas would be cool, but even I think Texas might back out. Like, I'm just not convinced that they, they're going to play in the Cotton Bowl, and I just think there's a lot of weird things going on there. And, I mean, a Fiesta Bowl win a, against Oklahoma. I mean, who they're not Texas, but they're Oklahoma. Like, they're the team who, who buried us year in, year out in the Big 12. Okay. And so I just really do think yeah. that would polish off So right I like a Fiesta Bowl. That's cool. Right? I like to have a fiesta as well. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot. <laughs> Eric texted me and said that it sounded like when you said, and I'm drinking, it sounded like you were just drinking alcohol. He's drinking coffee, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking certified coffee. St. Mary's, okay? 96.9 KACB. They only offer the best around here. Coffee, okay? So, anyways, uh, so you love the fiesta, right? Everyone loves to have a good fiesta. <laughs> uh, so you want the Fiesta Bowl, which is cool. But for me, here's how I look at things. There's the national championship or bust, which is, which is respectable if you don't agree with that. But it's cool. So at the end of the day, a BCS Bowl and a win from a BCS Bowl is going to give you any other type of trophy. There's the BCS championship trophy, which is the crystal. So you can either go and have the crystal ball. And if you don't get the crystal ball, you can have a BCS Bowl fine. To me, the Fiesta Bowl, the only thing it has differently than any of the other bowls is just the title BCS, which to some analysts, cool, that's great. But to me, I don't care for the title BCS, but what is so much more sweet to me was just is just to, A, the fact that we left Texas, B, the fact that we would most likely beat down Texas, C, it's got to do with recruiting. So the fact that it's just such a sweet taste of defeat to Texas, I don't care what bowl it is, just the fact that we could just beat down Texas, and especially if it's just like one of those games where we just put up great numbers because the defense isn't too great, right? Texas' defense isn't good. And if we can put down like a 62-14, because you know we would want to run up the score. Oh, yeah. And so if we could put down like a 62-14 or something like that, which is outrageous, but still, if we could put that up against Texas, it's just like, here's what you got, Texas. Bye-bye. We saw See, we saw you. Thanks for having your own network. Thanks for being in a different conference than us. Oh, you recruits that are out there. Look, we got someone, and Texas doesn't stand a shot against us. That's my thing. And and I do like that vision of us running up the score. Woody Hayes, when he was the head coach at Ohio State, had a quote when they were playing Michigan one time. They were up thirty five. They were up by thirty five points, and they scored. And then he went for two. Right. And right. after the game, after the game, a reporter said. Why would you go for two up 35 points against Michigan? And Woody, he- Woody Hayes looked him in the eye and said, because we couldn't go for three. <laughs> Sick. And so that, is, that would be beautiful if we could do that to you know Texas. What? And, it's, and it's also, if, you, if, if that were to happen at A&M, it would almost like be like, well, that's just, that's just someone's so swag. You know, he yeah. just goes for two. And, and let, me make, let me get this straight. Like, I'm not saying I don't want to play Texas. Some people really don't because, like, they want to be over them and all this stuff, and they don't want to be, like, connected to them. I'm well, not saying that. I'm okay. super excited about that. But I'm also super excited about the Fiesta Bowl. And the negative I see to the Cotton Bowl, I'm so sick of going there. We, had, we played Arkansas there a million times. 
We got rolled by LC. We've never won in that building. I'm I'm terrified of that building. Okay. I mean, maybe it would be like an opportunity to like, we finally get over the hump and we beat Texas there. We get over that hump and it's like this big awesome game and there's fireworks and all that. Oh, no, there'll be but fireworks. I just, I I don't like Jerry World. It's not fun. It doesn't have a college atmosphere. And now, the Fiesta Bowl in Tempe, Arizona, oh, definitely new cool. thing. It's really cool over there. I and mean, like the weather would be awesome. And that's the beautiful thing. You know what? And you you do have that right because that's the beautiful thing about all the bowls in general. Just new places, different things to see. Very cool matchups that you wouldn't see and the and for the players themselves going to different erotic places that they never would have gone to in the regular season. But you did mention the fact that okay, let's get over this whole entire aspect of we just need to get past Texas and get over with it and get on with it. But how cool would it be to get on with Texas knowing that you had like a 62 to 14 win? Like okay, yeah, we're done with Texas. Texas, I mean, Brandon thinks we're pretty good. 62 <laughs> to 14. I want this. Can we have the national championship trophy, jeez? <laughs> uh yeah, that would be absolutely phenomenal. I mean, what a way to end it. And like I said earlier, I don't think Johnny's going to win the Heisman. I think he might deserve it. But, man, if we ended with a huge win there, or even in the Fiesta Bowl, but if we had just a huge blowout win against Texas like that, he is the front runner for next year. You know I mean? like The first week of the show, well, the show won't ex- – I don't even want to talk about that. So the, let's just say the first week of the show – if we were throwing out like who our Heisman predictions were, Johnny would have to be our pick. I mean, he's going to be like Matt Barkley was this last year, and hopefully, he'll be a lot more successful than that. It's but just nuts. I just, it's just, it's crazy that why? W- I mean, the only reason that he's that he wouldn't be. And keep in mind, fans out there, that I'm a Florida State guy first and an Aggie <laughs> second. All right, that needs to be stated. I mean, it's cool, but like. Keep in mind also that three years ago I didn't even know anything about the Aggies, and now I've acclimated, right? And so I preface that because I'm saying, as an FSU fan, I don't see how John— the fact that he's a freshman is the only thing that's holding him back because I don't see how he wouldn't be the favorite for the Heisman because, you, like you said, if people are talking about Klein, he's faced better offenses or defenses than Klein. He has better numbers than Klein. What else do you want? Record. <laughs> that's what a lot of people want, which— Record two losses is a fantastic record, yeah, especially but, in the SEC. But, but Klein's undefeated, and he's going to go to the national championship, and that's something. But what if he doesn't? I mean, who know? I mean, that's going to if they lose, game changer. If they lose, Johnny Manziel jumps up to number one in the Heisman, in my opinion. I mean, really, total game changer if Klein loses. Now, with that said, and this is something that we were talking about a little bit this morning. How ridiculous is it that? I mean, I think you and I can tell. Like, the Aggies have had a way tougher schedule than Kansas State. That's why they're both not undefeated. But that's just not how it works. And I was talking about this today. So, the Aggies, huge win against Alabama. How awesome was it? But what did they mess up? They messed up the streak. The SEC has won the last six national championships. And now it's looking like they might not win one. And not only might they not win one, they're not going to get a chance to play in it unless USC wreaks havoc and beats Oregon (laughs) And beats Notre Dame, which I think could happen. And I, I'm going to say I think it will happen, actually. But how absurd is that? The conference that's won the last six national championships has three one-loss teams, has four through nine in the BCS standings. Four through nine. That's absurd. And isn't going to get a chance. It's not like they have like horrible teams. They're not going to get a chance to defend it. And I really do think that the rest of the world isn't going to feel as good about the SEC not winning a national championship when they're not even going to have anybody okay. in the game. So I'll tell you how the rest of the world is going to view it because I am the rest of the okay. world. Thank goodness. Okay, that's my thing. And then my my friend always says, this, "Oh, look at me! Oh, look at me! I'm SEC guy! Yay! I I, I get champion after championship after championship!" And I'm, and so the Aggies jumping into the SEC. This is one of the things that I wasn't a fan of is that all these Aggies just jumped to the SEC and they're like, well, yeah, the SEC's the best. And they just took on this SEC sense of pride just because they just jumped in. Oh, okay? but that pride is – everybody knows the SEC's the best. Yeah, Who's okay, the best? cool. I mean, cool, and so cool. we were like, okay, we're joining the party. And then people were like, well, you're not allowed to be the party until you prove it. And then we are like, well, we just beat number one Alabama. What's up? We're in the party now. We're in okay. the Fiesta Bowl party. Oh, all right, Fiesta. okay, cool. Uh, okay, that's cool. But I, I definitely would not mind – 
a non uh, SEC championship. Well, the only reason I would mind it because I always wanted it to just just be an everlasting SEC streak, and then Florida State just be the one to just <laughs> knock it down and just cancel it out and boom. I don't but, think I don't think they're gonna knock it down. I I could see Florida State like being like the sacrificial lamb though for the SEC. <laughs> you know, like the, oh we we want to turn we want to lose in the national championship. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But. So we'll hey. see. My prediction, Alabama wins the national championship. That's my prediction. You heard it mm-hmm. here. I think. I have no idea who's going to win the national I championship. I really do my think favorite, two out of the big three lose. My favorite right now is Oregon to win it. Okay. And, and, and like I've said I, that for a while now. This is going back to a couple shows yeah. that I've said Oregon. You have. And you got to like Oregon. Um, they definitely have to be the favorites. But I think Oregon State or USC can play spoiler, ruin their year. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, time and then Kansas State, they still got Texas, and they have at Baylor, and then they play Texas. I think they can lose one of those. And so hey. I really do think, and Vegas thinks this too. Alabama, right now, Vegas puts odds for possible games, and they're saying that if like Alabama would be favored over any team in the country in the national championship. And that is just not, it's like they didn't lose to an out of conference team, they lost to a team within the conference, and they already say they're the best conference. It's hard to get through there undefeated. And they lost to the Aggies. We're awesome. Like if there was a playoff, if there was a play- playoff format, we might be like possibly getting into that. If it was an eighteen playoff format, we'd definitely be getting into that. And so, I just don't see how you can end a six-year run when there's a one-loss team at, in Alabama who Vegas says could beat any team in the national championship who well, hasn't been beat by a non-conference team. So here's my skinny man. With that is that, and by the way, my. Destroyers, my destroyer team always says that. I always say here's the skinny, which I did. Which, by the way, destroyers are in the championship. The game was last night. It got rained out. If you are listening, which you are, tons of people are, <laughs> the championship has been rescheduled to next Sunday, 845. So a Sunday, a week from yesterday, Sunday, 845, and that is the destroyers comprised of St. Mary's women, who I am the coach of, Ben Klafke, is the coach as well as well as John Corona, which I, I man, I I got Ben's last name right, correct? You got it. Thank goodness. Boom. Ben. Boom, Ben. Check. Okay. So, anyways, here's what I think about this whole aspect, and that's why we need the playoff. Like, so if you're gonna have that reasonable argument, and that's cool. And if Alabama moves to number four, then let them prove it through a playoff system. And it's still gonna go through its kinks. Uh, it's still got a lot of kinks to work out when it eventually does get implemented, but. Without a doubt, no matter what's going on, I think the playoff system is just, it's, it's, it's so needed. It is, and it's so funny because, like, last year, I think really got everybody angry about the playoff because they were, like, I mean, wanting the playoffs because they were like, oh, my gosh, you have SEC versus SEC in the national championship. This is awful. We need a playoff. Like, we need someone else to get in there. And now you're seeing, like, the opposite of that. I mean, let's assume that it is Oregon versus Kansas State in the national championship. In a playoff, an SEC team is always going to get it and the sec is going to say we're going to win it every year like that is that's the attitude they're coming and that's the someone swag attitude right, right that the right. sec has and that's what's also we will not be beat because if you got that attitude with the sec and then the other teams can finally say okay well let's have a shot at you right and then so it at least gives the other teams to say okay well if this is true let me try to beat you or not and then so the sec can come back and say well see we told you so we played you and we beat you or florida state can say see we told you so I have to read. Hey, uh, yeah, don't you have some? You've been reading that I, thing. I have, yeah, we we've been getting some texts and tweets, whatnot. Yeah, come on. I dog. just got to be sharing. Well, those, okay, dog. Casey has been tweeting at me nonstop, trying to get me to mess up. And he also said that my prediction, he's going to write on the list. My friends have to keep a list of my predictions, like Oregon, uh, Oregon, and what did I say? Oregon and uh, Notre Dame are both going to lose to USC. He just wrote that on a list of predictions because people say I don't stick with them, which is kind of true. Cool. So cool. anyway, cool. Julia Wyram said. Such a good show today. Listened to almost the whole thing, then had to walk to class. Yes, I'm a female, but no, I did not stop listening because Brandon has a girlfriend. Ha ha. <laughs> Amy doesn't owe him anything. <laughs> Amy's off the hook. <laughs> She's off the hook. Uh, oh, man. Classic. Oh, man. That's a great tweet right there. Yeah, so uh, for, I actually did retweet the picture of uh, the Johnny... Signing and imagine this thing's huge. This thing, That's this so picture cool is me, like man. I love stuff like that. It's like three feet by three feet. It's like a yard by yard. It's absolutely huge. And so, uh, check that out at our Twitter. I retweeted it. It was tweeted in by 
Daniel Frazee, who is Stephen Frazee's uh, brother. He's awesome. Maybe we'll have him on the show sometime. Hey. That reminds me, Ags, get out there tonight, uh, 7 o'clock, Aggie basketball. Oh. Reed Arena versus Troy. Need your support. And they're giving out headbands that have their Twitter on them, at Reed Rowdy's. So cool. There's some free ones left for you. I think they're going to have the big heads there. It's going to be crazy. Maybe look up some facts about uh, some of the Troy players. Come in, you know, so talk cool. a little smack so cool. before the game. And if also, uh, so that's a foot, that's a that's a sports shout out. Also, I think St. Mary's is accepting donations, uh, canned food. Am I am I correct in saying that? Right? Yeah. So uh, come by St. Mary's, drop off some canned food as well. It is Thanksgiving, which, by the way, uh, me and Amy went to H E B last night, right? And there is one small strip of Thanksgiving style plates and everything else. Other than that, there's Christmas trees and they're playing Christmas music. Like, yo, let me have some time for turkey for a little bit. I, I, I don't know. What do you got on this? Uh, I, I do agree. I like your mentality that we get. I mean, this is the way it goes. Like, you have to be, <laughs> we have to be thankful first. You know, you got to right. be like good Americans. Right. Be thankful. You do the Thanksgiving parade <laughs> before Santa comes out yeah. and Macy's Day Parade, right? Yeah. it's. I mean, you got to parade Thanksgiving. I want some turkey first, and I want to see brown all over, you know, uh, before I start seeing green and, and red. And, guys, Brandon takes this pretty seriously. So, Brandon, last night. <laughs> yes, here we go. Comes into our house. Here we go. With this ice cream, and it's like <laughs> the official ice cream of Christmas, <laughs> labeled this by Brandon. It's called Christmas Cookie. Christmas it's Cookie it's Ice Cream. so good. Sticks it in the freezer, walks out in the living room and says, hey guys, you're going to have to try this ice cream I just bought, but no one can have any until after Thanksgiving. <laughs> Which is so true. I'm big on savoring Christmas for when it's time to be savored. Yeah, and I, it's a Eggnog good, as it's well. a good mentality. As well. It's a good mentality, and we got to remember what the whole season's about. I think it's about all giving. Of us are, yeah, it is about giving. And I mean, like Thanksgiving, giving. It really is all the same stuff. Yeah, but man. we have to, we have to remember. You know, like it's not about, it's not about Santa. I love Santa. It's not about. It's about the gifts we give to other people. It's about family. It's about God. It's about Jesus, you know, and, and people don't realize that. God, yes. It's about ice cream. It's, it's about, about Brandon's ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> it's about Christ, Moss. <laughs> exactly. Christ, Moss. Put, the Christ, put the Christ back in Christmas, guys. Christ and will so, always be in Christmas for me. You know that? Me too, man. <laughs> is, ice, is ice in Christmas? There is no ice cream in Christmas. <laughs> There's not. There's not any. <laughs> There's no, uh, huh. Is there? No, I can't. I were thinking. No, there's no e. There's no um, e. So we have three minutes left. Um, what I else? guess we could real quickly talk about what a threat Sam Houston State is. Psych, guys. If we <laughs> lose, if we lose, Brandon and I are gonna make a oh. deal with you right now. We will never go on air again. Whoa, we'll never easy, go on air. easy, easy. <laughs> um, but, but you know what? I was actually gonna talk about that. That, and we don't have time to talk about yeah. it. But what I will say, people talk about. Oh man, teams can't get up for this game. You know, and it's a valid point for any of the games. It's interesting that I think A&M has this unique dynamic offense, which just there's nothing to do but get up. When you're running, it's Kingsbury, and he's just calling these crazy plays, and you can't but get up. Like, you can call uh, – because all of his sets of plays are just so energetic, and they're so offensive, and they're so up and upbeat. So it's just – I mean, you can – in terms of concentration, you can be out of it, but these plays and the way this entire team is ran – you know, it's it forces you to kind of get up. What kind of tweets are you getting? Over and there? and Johnny has just so much killer instinct. I mean, he, you know, he's just gonna he wants to make plays. Like he, that's all he knows how to do. So you're exactly right. As long as Johnny's in, he's gonna be like, oh look, the running lanes are open. I'm gonna take it. Touchdown, me. He's gonna have my prediction. He'll have two long rushing touchdowns. I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a great game by him. Uh, just some, some. Uh, Come on. I mean, we got one that was making fun of you. I'm Brandon Brown, and I'm drinking. Hashtag Who said Catholic that? Radio. Who said that? Casey. Oh, thanks, Casey. You're having a laugh. Um, drinking his, he was drinking his coffee. That's it. And oh, we, Casey just added a new one to the list, to Here the Chris go. list. He added that uh, Johnny's going to have two rushing touchdowns against Sam Houston State. He's adding that to my list. Oh, you're having a laugh. Fair enough. Uh, he wanted to know, and we don't have time for this, but I'll give you a quick answer. Did Ryan Soap 25 earn himself some draft stock this weekend? Yeah, I think so. I think so. That said, I believe he's now had somewhere between four and five concussions, so we'll definitely have to keep a watch on oh, that's that one. Scary. That's God bless him. definitely very scary, and that can end a lot of careers. So uh, 
hopefully you'll be okay on that end. Okay. Well, listen, man, this was a very productive show. I thought you were awesome. I thought you were awesomer. Oh, man, that's so sweet. KACB 96.9, Helmet to Helmet Radio. Please tune in next week. We will be here from 3 to 4. Helmet to Helmet Radio. I'm Brandon Brown. And I'm Chris Meyer.